The 2022 World Cup is finally here. And as an Englishman who's defected to Japan, uh, I'm not that optimistic for this World Cup. Not just because, well, we're not very good, but because, let's be real, Southgate, questionable. But you know what? This isn't a football commentary channel. We're not going to go into that today. Instead, I'm going to do what we do best. Enter Football Manager and do the weird and wonderful. I have made every single Premier League manager, England manager, and simmed a World Cup with them. We're going to take a look at their squad, their formation, how they got on. If England had sacked their manager back in the summer, who would have been the right man to take over? Let's find out, shall we? To kick off this video, I feel like there's only one manager to start with. Pep Guardiola, as of late, the most successful Premier League manager. Here is the squad that he took to the World Cup. And yes, that's right, he didn't take Trent Alexander-Arnold. Suspecting some bias there, Pep. In the group stage, England topped their group. Harry Kane was on fire. England beat in the USA 4-1, beating Iran 3-0, a Harry Kane hat-trick, and most recently, a 3-2 win against the Welsh. A tight-fought affair, but a game that they ultimately won playing a 4-3-3. As for the knockout, didn't quite go to plan for England. They beat Qatar 3-0, but ultimately lost to the eventual runners-up France 1-0 in the quarterfinals. Pep persisted with the 4-3-3, but unfortunately, an early Mbappe goal was the ultimate decider in a game that, let's be honest, wasn't exactly a classic. France played with seven men behind the ball most of the time. Having talked about Pep, there's only one man to move on to next. Jurgen Klopp, he's ditched Liverpool, he's entered England, here's his squad. Uh, he brought Tamori, but he, he didn't bring Trent. In fact, the only Liverpool player he bought was Jordan Henderson. I know what you're thinking, is Trent injured? No, no, Pep and Klopp haven't taken him. Maybe they know something that we don't. Another really interesting inclusion for Klopp's side was Jared Bowen, who he decided to bring. Now, like the previous sim, England topped Group B. This time, three wins, zero goals conceded, 13 goals scored for, 5-0 against Wales, 6-0 against Iran. Lots of different goal scorers. Much like Guardiola, Pep fell to France again in the quarterfinals. France topping their group, England topping theirs. Worth noting, England playing Senegal last time around. feel like I didn't really make enough of the fact that Qatar made it out the group. Before we talk about that England v France game, probably should acknowledge, Germany played Switzerland in the final and Jurgen Klopp got to watch his nation win. Against Switzerland though. Weird. So in Klopp's game against France, it was 0-0. It went to a penalty shootout. What we're learning here is apparently penalties will decide an England v France game. In this match, very, very close. John Stones missed the only penalty of the shootout. You can see here how Klopp lined up. No space for Jordan Henderson in his starting 11. Bellingham playing at defensive midfielder. So Klopp dropping out at the same point as Pep. Worth noting, Ramsdale got five clean sheets. England knocked out the World Cup without conceding a goal. I've seen England lose to France twice. I've got a secret weapon though. Patrick Vieira, 107 caps for the French national team. Surely he's the man to break them down. Maybe I'm a biased England fan. Very surprised he hasn't brought Trent either. Is anyone going to take Trent to the World Cup is now what I'm wondering. Tamori started at centre-back alongside Jones and in the group stage with Vieira, three wins out of three, 10 goals, not too shabby. Somewhat concerned, just gone to my save game at the end of the World Cup. France are champions, England aren't in the final. And they're not in the final because having beaten Qatar, who made it through the group stage again, 5-0, Vieira's England lost to France. I feel like at this point I should just put a bet on France to beat England in the World Cup. It feels like it's quite likely to happen. England actually lost in heartbreaking fashion. Having taken the lead in the game, Koundé scored in the 94th minute. Here is how they lined up. Still a 4-3-3, interesting to note. James Justin at left wing back. Jordan Henderson did start a defensive midfielder. Ramsdale had a Western supermare of a quarterfinal. Hi. Oh, only me. This is Jack at the end of recording the video. It took about two hours to go through all the save games and stuff. So just a polite request. If you're enjoying the video so far and the work that's gone into it, leave a like. And if you've got an idea for another Football Manager experiment you'd like to see, leave it in the comments. We're going to have more coming up soon. Anyway, uh, next manager up. Go, editing Jack, cut, cut this bout. Cut the up next, we've got a manager who is working absolute miracles with a very good Arsenal team, currently top of the Premier League, Mikel Arteta. Now, worth noting, one of the few managers in this sim who took Jadon Sancho. That's right, Jadon Sancho made it to the World Cup 
with Arteta. Now in the group stage, England finished top of the group, Wales finishing second. Don't feel like that's happened all that often, but England, 11 goals for, one against. How did they get on in the knockouts? I'll tell you how they got on. They won the whole thing, beating S Senegal. Senegal in the final. You're not, I've not misread that, that's Senegal. You can see the whole way that Senegal made things here. They beat Tunisia, beat Poland, beat Morocco. Morocco made it to a semi-final. This is a weird competition. This is like Samuel Eto's World Cup predictions. Have you guys seen that? Maybe he's on to something. Despite having an arguably easy final, England's actual route to the final was not. They beat the Netherlands 2-1, playing a 4-2-3-1. First manager not to play a 4-3-3. Arteta might know something the others didn't. England then beat Argentina in the quarterfinals 1-0. A deserved win, Foyth sent off, Reese James an unlikely hero. It's just dawned on me, not seen a lot of Saka being picked by Arteta. This man, he's got rid of all his bias. He's picking a winning team and they won against Spain in the extra time of the semi-final. Sergio Ramos lost his head, got sent off with two minutes left. As for the final, another unlikely hero. I've noticed a lot of Tamori. I've not noticed a lot of Tammy Abraham during this test. Here he is. He popped up with a penalty scored in the final, and then England went to win the shootout. I mean, if they hadn't won it, it would have been the biggest upset of all time. Here's the team they played. Henderson and Phillips at defence in mid. Foden and Sterling on the left and right. Mount through the middle with Kane up top. In the end, though, it was a pretty good defensive performance that secured them a World Cup win. So Arteta brought it home. Let's go a little closer to home. Taking a British manager, Brendan Rodgers. He used to be a serial winner. Then he, then he went to Leicester. Let's see how he got on. So far, no managers have been grouped. And, well, neither were Brendan Rodgers as England. They finished top of the group. They got seven goals for, one against, three wins out of three. I'm starting to buy into the idea that England are overpowered in football manager. As for how they got on, well, good news. Poland took out France on penalties, then England beat Poland. And, uh, well, England went on to get to the final and lost 2-1 to Germany. I thought that losing to Italy in the Euros finals was a low point. This would probably be even lower. England lose 2-1 to Germany. They played a 4-3-3 with Rodgers. He started Tammy Abraham in this game with Grealish on the left, and he took Ward Prowse on the plane who actually got an assist to his name. I will say, he uh, he started three out of seven World Cup games, did War Prowse. He got a 6.78 rating. So, so maybe Gareth made the right decision not to take him this year. I have also noticed Joe Gomez was playing left back. Reese James was playing in the middle. Now, I really thought it was going to be down to injuries or something. We are the day after that World Cup final was played. No one was injured. That was an Stein 11 he decided to play. I'm beginning to think he was paid to throw the final. And speaking of odd squad picks, that brings me on nicely to Thomas Frank. Thomas Frank might have had the weirdest selections out of all the managers I tested. Yeah, I bet you didn't see this one. Ivan Tony on the plane. He was at the World Cup. Not the weirdest selection. Dewsbury Hall made the selection. I mean, he's had a very good season for Leicester in the save game. But really? I can question you all I want, but Thomas Frank did get England to top of the group stage. Unfortunately, however, they lost in the semi-finals. England falling short, losing to eventual winners Portugal. Ronaldo's loving life of that, isn't he, if this happens? They did, however, beat France on penalties. I think that might be the first time we've seen England actually beat France in any of these sims. So Frank was playing a 4-3-3 when England beat France. A deserved win as well. Saka playing superbly in this game. And despite Harry Kane missing the opening penalty of the shootout, England did go on to win that. Unfortunately, they did lose to Portugal, as we've already discussed. Dewsbury Hall did come on as a sub in this game. He got a 6.4 rating. So uh, yeah, maybe he shouldn't be playing. And if you were wondering, Ivan Tony, taken on the plane by Thomas Frank, started one game, came on as a sub once, did absolutely nothing. You know what? I've had enough of 4 3 threes and 4 2 3 ones. Here is De Zerbi. He has a different preferred formation. That should mean that he approached things differently. And looking at their squad selection, definitely looks that way. They look like they might be playing a five at the back with defensive midfielders. Here is the team that he took. Nothing too unusual here, really. I guess the fact Tamori's not starting in a back three might be a little bit strange. Lots of the managers playing a back four did pick him. And maybe there's a reason those managers weren't playing a five at the back and were playing Tamori. England, for the first time in any of these, finished behind the USA. That hurt to say. And it turns out the LeBron James of soccer, he was the difference maker. 56th minute goal, finished 1-0 USA. 
Didn't get much better for England. Uh, knocked out by the Netherlands, 2-1. And uh, France won the whole thing. Well, at least they didn't lose to France, I suppose. Zerbi did play that five at the back system throughout the whole competition. Again, did not start Tamori, which is interesting to note. Harry Gain, throughout all of these simulations, has been the go-to starting striker. Interesting to see the players that he used. James Justin still a left wing back. Ben Chilwell just sat chilling on the bench. After this tactically questionable performance, I'm going to go for a manager who I do rate tactically for the next one. Eddie Howe. How did he get on? That, that was awful. Move on. Okay, Eddie Howe is at the wheel. They've their their second in group, but this hasn't gone well, has it? They lost to the USA again, again. They played a four three three. Somehow, it's not worked for them. They're playing Greece James at centre back. What is Eddie Howe doing? I'll tell you what he's doing. He's dropped Harry Maguire. I was looking through this thing, and Ch Trevor Chalobah's in the team. Who's not here? Harry Maguire didn't make the plane. England finished second. Maybe he is not a fraud after all. Okay, a bit of retribution from the Zerbi universe. Eddie Howe did actually manage to beat the Netherlands, who, interestingly enough, they played again at the exact same point. They scraped from penalties. They then got a win against Argentina and then lost to Germany. So Eddie Howe's are coming to a semi-final defeat. I think what we're learning from all of this is that England will either lose to France or Germany. According to Football Manager, it's more than 50% likely. Up next, we've got England centurion and current Everton manager, Frank Lampard. Looking at his squad, he did bring Calvert-Lewin, who I have seen a few managers pick. He is quite good in Football Manager, of course, injured in real life. Elsewhere, here is their team. Not noticing too much weirdness, to be honest. As for how they got on in the group stage... Not quite so convincing for Lampard. Uh, three games played. One win. They drew against Wales. They drew against the USA. They got through by virtue of the fact they beat Iran 4-0. After an unconvincing run in the group stage, safe to say the knockouts went that little bit better. Beat Qatar 4-0. A draw against Denmark. They won 1-0. Beat Spain, but eventually lost to Argentina. So Lampard for this game, playing the 4-3-3. You can see the squad he started with. Raheem Sterling starting up front. Harry Kane on the bench. Hadn't even spotted this till just now. Di Maria was sent off in the 63rd minute. It was 1-1 at that moment in time. And they still managed to lose 3-1. Only England. Saka, by the way, had a crazy World Cup in this simulation under Lampard. He got five goals in the World Cup in three appearances. 7.72 rating. Not too shabby. David Moyes struggling in real life. He's going to have to put away all his Scottish bias and try and lead the English to victory. Good luck, Dave. Dave? David? Dave? Can I call him Dave? We're not friends. I can't call him Dave. So here is the squad that Moyes took to the World Cup. Worth noting, Jared Bowen is on the plane for him. And I've noticed again, there's, there's st I've still not seen very much Trent Alexander-Arnold. I'll keep an eye out for him. He's got to show up eventually. In the group stage, England didn't win every game. They drew a match. Fortunately, it didn't cost them the draw. A 1-1 game against Wales, where Tammy Abraham again came up clutch. Football manager really rates Tammy Abraham. As for the knockouts, England beat Ecuador 9-0, beat Argentina, and then lost on penalties to Belgium been a lot of penalty defeats it's quite quite triggering as an Englishman by the way Belgium went on to win the whole thing as well fair play Belgium there's only one game I want to look at here it's the 9-0 win against Ecuador what were they doing how were they playing this is the team that he played and I'll be honest that is one of the most normal kind of ish looking teams I've seen in any of this simulation with the exception of Tamori that is a team that you know you could actually see England fielding Grealish got two Harry Kane scored four. Haven't checked this for the other semi-final defeats. Uh, they did make it to the third round and they beat Tunisia. Yeah, Tunisia made it to the semi-finals of the World Cup. I don't know either. Talked about David Moyes being under pressure. Here's another man. He's under some pressure. Graham Potter, the Chelsea manager. That still feels weird to say. Now England manager. This is the squad that he took to the World Cup. Looks like he's trying to play a three at the back as well which concerns me. Noticed, I saw this on a few managers, Ollie Watkins is on the plane. Mentioned the fray at the back, resulted in England's worst group stage performance. Not only did they finish second, they only won one game, they drew 0-0 against Wales, they drew 1-1 against the USA, and they beat Iran 2-0. 
It's not exactly convincing going into the knockout. This is the formation that Potter played, by the way. A 5-2-2-1. Tamori playing left centre-back. Saka left wing-back. I mean, maybe it could do well in the knockouts. Who knows? I say who knows, like I don't have the ability with a save game to just go to the end of the World Cup and find out. By the way, the Holland won the whole thing. They beat France 4-0 in the final. As for how England got on, they got knocked out by Holland 2-0. Yeah, not, not great. Wait, South Korea got to the quarterfinals. Why, why am I wearing a Japan kit? Okay, uh, just want it to be known, not a glory supporter, but I am now wearing a South Korea kit for the rest of this video. Also, another nice kit. Lots of good kits this World Cup. Now, speaking of good kits, can we talk about Nottingham Forest's kit? You know, the one without a sponsor. I know it's not really a design choice. One of the best looking kits in the, in the Premier League this year. I'm going to use that as a very loose link for the fact that the next manager up is Steve Cooper, Nottingham Forest manager. Let's see his squad. He might have appeared in a couple of the others. First time I've noticed him. Trent is on the plane, everyone. He's made it. Hallelujah. Again, not biased. Also, Gwayi made, made the squad. Weird. Oh. Uh, mm. Well, I've been getting in the rhythm with doing, here's the group stage. Here's the knockouts. Arana finished above England in the group. So Cooper's England team beat Wales. They then lost 2-0 to the USA which I kind of thought was bad. Again, they're playing this defensive nonsense and they did have Gwayi in... The, I don't want to say it's Gwayi's fault. He is on a 6.3. Gwayi was dropped for the next game. They lost to Iran 2-1. England were winning until the 85th minute. They conceded to and crashed out in the group stage. I really don't hope this doesn't happen. There's been lots of people trying to play a five at the back. There's one man who, if he's going to make it work could make it work if it's ever going to work. What I think is it's just not very good in Football Manager. But Antonio Conte is here to save the day. Good news, he's taken Trent as well. I always rated Conte. And also, it looks like he's actually playing him at right wing back, which makes me feel happy. I don't think there's anything too much more weird with this team, although... Will Prowse is on the plane again. He's been picked by a lot of the managers. And back with a familiar sight, England topping the group stage. Seven goals scored... Zero against Conte's the man. Or at least he, he was the man. They lost to France in the quarterfinals again. Normal service has resumed. France are blooming good. Although they lost to Belgium, who have won their second World Cup in all these Sims. Also, Korea, Japan, both knocked out in the same stage. I was thinking for a second I was going to have to go switch back to the Japan shirt. In terms of the defeat for Conte to France, they played the five at the back. You can see how they lined up here. Went with Walker at right back with Reese James at right centre back. That's interesting. Maybe you'd have those two the other way round. But he tried to make the five at the back work. It didn't work. I say that like France weren't also playing it. Kylian Mbappe is good in Ian Football Manager. This man... Bit, bit of a cheat code. The way I say that implies he's only good in football manager. He's quite good in real life, I hear. Next manager up, a manager doing really well this year, Marco Silva. He's got Fulham firing. Has he got England firing? I'm going to say it. He, he's taken Trent Alexander-Arnold. So things are definitely going to go well. So in the group stage, England topped the group. Iran actually managed to get out in second, which we've not seen all that often. The USA and Wales falling short. I did all that bigging up of Silva... England lost to the Netherlands in the second round, and they lost to France, who uh, went on to win the whole thing. Switzerland made it to another final, by the way, and Iran made it further than England. I want to sit here and blame it on them playing a five at the back, but no, England just outclassed. They played a 4-2-3-1. Here is how Silva lined up the team. Doesn't really look like there's anything wrong with it, but well, they lost, so it wasn't good enough, was it? Let's move on to the next one. This is a really awkward ending. Now, I have got a confession. At the time of simulating all these versions of the video, um, Wolves don't have a manager. Bournemouth don't have a manager. I I'm going to compensate you with a wild card at the end. But one man who has literally just been appointed and just made it into the video is Unai Emery. He has returned to England. He's at the helm of Villa. And, well, in this simulation, he's now the manager of England. His manager stats, compared to some of the other guys we've looked at, not very good. So Emery didn't take Trent Alexander-Arnold, but he did take Joe Gomez. Also, Luke Shaw makes it. I feel, I feel like I've not seen a lot of Luke Shaw in these videos. Has he been in many of them? I forgot he existed. Tactically, it looks like Emery's setting up in a 4-4-2. Something to monitor for the knockout. So while speaking of the group stage, played three, won three, 10 goals scored four, zero against, 
Iran made it out the group again. Now, I'm going to be honest, it'd be easy to look at the fact that England have lost to France again and go, well, France have won another one, Jack. This is getting boring now. Let's acknowledge some cool things. Tunisia made it to the semi-finals. South Korea made it to the quarterfinals again. That's why I bought the kit. Um, Qatar made it through the groups. Um, any other weirdness? I mean, Serbia making it through, maybe a little bit strange. I say it could be a little bit strange. Brazil literally didn't make it out of their group stage in fourth. Also, it goes without saying that with this video, I'm compressing everything down quite a lot. If you notice weird stuff that I haven't spoiled, please let me know about it down in the comments. Obviously, lots of simulations to go through here, lots of bits and pieces. I will have obviously missed some stuff. Up next, a manager who, uh, well, he's, he's been sacked, hasn't he? But at the time of me doing all the sims, he hadn't been sacked. Ralph Hasselhutl, ladies and gentlemen, give him a round of applause. So this is the squad that the former Southampton manager took to the World Cup. We're at the end of the group stage. There's lots of players one yellow off a suspension and lots of players one red off a suspension. Nothing too out of the ordinary. I don't think he has chosen to take Ward Prowse, which I respect the loyalty of, though. And well, an angry England team that had some discipline issues, apparently. Top the group, eight goals scored, four, three wins out of three. All clean sheets. He's done well so far. I'll tell you what, Ralph's done something that not many managers did do in this test. They managed to beat France. He should attach this to his next job application. Unfortunately, they did lose to eventual winner Spain, who beat Denmark in the final. Denmark, by the way, I mean, they had a pretty good run to make it through. If you're wondering what the secret is to shutting down Mbappe, it's uh, just playing a 4-2-3-1. I will say Jude Bellingham played very, very well. Uh, War Prowse did not make an appearance in this game. As you already saw, they did lose in heartbreaking fashion to Spain. Ward Prowse got a 6.6 .6 in this game. Rotated the team around a little bit. Ramsdale not having a good appearance as Morata scored with literally the last kick of the game to knock England out. I honestly thought England would win more than they have so far in this video. Up next, we've got Eric Ten Hag, a manager who I honestly think is doing an amazing job at Manchester United, not just in terms of transitioning them off the pitch, but also maybe keeping some egos in check. Not that the England team's full of egos, but maybe that will help him out as they try and navigate the World Cup. Worth noting, he did take Harry Maguire. For all the managers that didn't take him, I did think that Ten Hag might be another one to add to that list. As for how Ten Hag got on, well, they made it through the group stage. Not completely smooth sailing. Only five goals scored four. That might be the lowest amount of goals scored we've actually seen for an England team in this stage of the competition. Their draw, by the way, came against Wales, who ultimately bottomed the group. As for how they got on in the knockout stages with Ten Hag, well, you couldn't make it up. England played Portugal in the semi-final and they lost. Now, I know what you're thinking. Did Ronaldo play a role in this game as Portugal went on penalties? Well, he wasn't even starting the game. He came on off the bench and got a 6.9 rating. He didn't actually do anything during the game, so maybe Ten Hag's going to be a little bit relieved about that. Manchester United player Rashford turned up big. Tammy Abraham scoring in the 116th minute. Ten Hag can breathe a sigh of relief. Portugal didn't win the whole thing. France beat them in the final again. Now, before we get to my wild card to end this video, one manager who I thought we'd save till the end, Jesse Marsh, an American manager. Of course, England in a group against the USA is set to be a bit of a blockbuster match. How's Jesse Marsh going to get on? I really hope that he doesn't do anything too biased and like throw the game against America. Let, let's see how the Leeds manager got on. So in terms of team selection, he was one of only a few managers that actually took James Madison in their squad, which is interesting to note. No space for Trent Alexander-Arnold, although Joe Gomez popped up again. Joe Gomez, very loved by football manager, it appears. As for how they got on in the group stage, England finished joint top with the USA, the only team they dropped points against. It was a 2-2 draw with a last-minute goal by Marcus Rashford to secure a share of the spoils. I mean, that is... That would have been embarrassing, wouldn't it, if they'd lost? This is the team they played, by the way. Another 4-2-3-1. Feels like this has been a successful formation for a lot of the managers. Kind of curious to see how well it serves Jesse in the knockouts. Now, I'm loading up my save game here at the end of the World Cup. I don't know what's happened. My dream scenario is an England v USA World Cup final. England win the World Cup. It was 5-3 over Australia. Huh. Okay, let's focus on England first. There's some weirdness we're going to have to look at here, I think, in a bit more detail. England beat the Netherlands, beat Argentina 6-0, beat Brazil 3-2. 
then beat Australia. Lots of teams they've played there that we didn't see in any of the other simulations. This must have been a really weird World Cup. Also, Japan got further than Korea. I'm going to go swap my shirt. I'll be back. I'll be back. I mean, first things first, let's acknowledge the fact Jesse Marsh, the American, won England a World Cup. I need to look at some of these games. 6-0 against Argentina. I mean, it looks like Argentina completely capitulated. Harry Kane got four goals. This is the team they started with in that match. Eric Dyer starting at centre-back. He's not featured in many of these at all. They then, of course, played Brazil in the semi-finals. Abraham started this game. Madison started out on the right-hand side. Tamori had a really good performance. And it was actually Tammy Abraham again with an extra time goal. I'll tell you what, if the World Cup comes around and England gets to the knockout stages and we're in extra time, I'm going to be very annoyed about the fact that we've not got Tammy Abraham to bring on as a super sub. And then in the final, England be Australia. I mean, I thought Senegal was weird. I actually feel like Australia might be more weird. This game went to extra time, by the way. Australia took it at 2-2. They then took the lead, and England scored three goals without reply in the last 15 minutes. I mean, if this happened in real life, it'd be bonkers. I know this is a video about England, right? But I want to see more about Australia. They didn't even win in their World Cup group. In Group D, they did not win a game. They got through on a three-way tie with Tunisia and Denmark. Now I'm really curious to look at the, the other groups. What else happened? I mean, Ecuador topped a group with the with the Netherlands. Um, anything else particularly weird happen? I mean, obviously Japan made it through, hence the shirt. Spain finished bottom of that group of death, by the way. That's mad. I mean, Brazil didn't finish bottom of their group this time around. Portugal, though... The team who previously did so well, they got one point in this simulation and they've, they've sacked their manager. I mean, worth acknowledging as well, Australia played USA in a quarterfinals. This was a weird World Cup, completely glossing over the fact that Ghana and Croatia made it to the quarterfinal and it was a Croatia-Australia semi-final. This was the weirdest sim of the lot. And we've still got the wild card left to go. Okay, so to round up this video, a couple of clubs didn't have managers. I wanted a wild card, a X factor, a manager who I'd want to manage England into battle in Qatar. Uh, Sean Dyche was my selection. His actual stats are really good in the stuff they're good in. Just ignore the whole attacking and fitness side. That's not important. Defence wins championships. I hope he does okay. So this is Dyche's team. He included Dewsbury Hall. I'm not going to question it. Sean knows best. Um, that does mean he didn't take Madison or Bowen. He took Dewsbury Hall over both of them. Elsewhere in the team, only one of a handful of managers to take Trent Alexander-Arnold and Joe Gomez. Not taking that many centre-backs, I can feel a 4-4-2 brewing. In the group stage, only six goals scored for. Yeah, they conceded a goal, but England topped the group. Three wins in friendly with Dyche Ball. The knockout stages, how did they go? Let's find out. I'll tell you how it went. They beat Brazil in the final 3-1. And yes, if you're wondering, they did just play a 4-4-2. People are going to think that I sat and simulated this a load of times. I did one sim of every single one of these. Sean Dyche might be the saviour. In terms of the knockouts, beat Ecuador, beat Argentina, beat the Spanish, beat the Brazilians. That's how you want to win a World Cup. I've just noticed that USA and Australia played again in the quarterfinals. Am I really going to put a bet on a USA-Australia quarterfinal? Can I bet on that? Is that like... Because the game seems to think that's going to happen. By the way, star of Sean Dyche's World Cup winning team, Jack Grealish, four assists. What a player. I went into this video thinking it'd be, you know, a good little bit of fun. Interesting to see how different managers perform with the England squad at the World Cup. At this point, I'm ready to paint a red and white cross on my face, scream Sean Dyche's name from the rooftops and uh, start a campaign to get him to be the next manager. 4-4-2 works, people. Football manager said so. So we've conclusively answered who England should appoint when Southgate inevitably bottles it. Getting Arteta, getting Jesse Marsh, or, or Sean Dyche. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have and you're new around here, make sure to subscribe for more Football Manager experiments and just general videos like this one. Hopefully we'll have a few more World Cup simulations coming up soon. If you want to see more, slap a like on the video, share it around. Lots of effort went into this and it is duly appreciated. Take it easy. And until next time, it's me, Jack, and I'll see you in a bit. I'm out.